it's, really, it's really an emotional one. She. Oh God! <laughs> don't cry! Don't cry! Don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's a lot. You know, we we did introduction sometimes in December. Mm. In fact, my proposal was mega. Mm. As a, as a, as a pastor, I did one of my annual programs with about four hundred persons in attendance. At the wrap up of the event, I just went on my news on the altar there. Wow! Pop this question. Wow. Will you marry me? And oh, she was so crazy. Like she, what? she didn't go crazy. <laughs> she was crazy. <laughs> <laughs>so you're welcome to the greatest show in the entire world my name is Adi Folami Agumbiade it's a dark post show where we help young people start new careers new relationships and new families and figure out the way the world works today we'll be talking about something that unless you unless you don't have a job but if you're working at some point if you're working and dating at some particular point in time you will experience a breakup so on today's show we'll be discussing how to stay focused at work after a breakup to start off the show, we'll be reviewing an article published December 19, 2022 on Harvard Business Review. Okay. It's, the author is Evelyn Nam. How to stay focused at work after a breakup. The person I was dating broke up with me. He gave me no justification, showed no care, and gave no apologies before hanging up the phone. I'm done, he said, and that was that. It was the day before a big project, Project Dead Bank at work. Emotionally, I was angry and heartbroken. Physically, I was restless and sleep, and sleep deprived. The more I tried to push the thoughts of rejection from my mind, the deeper I fell into my anxiety. Okay, so I would ask you this, because you're reading this as if you are the one. <laughs> in fact, if you are running for political office in the future, I will just take you and I will just capture this part. No, no, you take me for the guest. Okay. So, how many people can relate? Project deadline. They broke up with you, mm. critical moment. My one. Can you relate? I can, I can. You can I've, been, I've been there. So what happened? Okay, like I said, I've been there. I remember um, in 2018, thereabouts, I was preparing to get married. I think election was February the following year, 2019. And um, all plans were set and done. I met this beautiful babe, spirit field. Talented, as skilled, and we decided to go on a life <laughs> journey. It's, it's really an emotional one. She. Oh God! <laughs> don't cry! Don't cry! Don't cry. It's a lot. You know, we we did introduction sometimes in December. Mm. In fact, my proposal was mega. Mm. As a, as a, as a pastor, I did one of my annual programs with about four hundred persons in attendance. At the wrap-up of the event, I just went on my news on the altar there. Wow. Pop this question. Wow. Will you marry me? And oh, she was so crazy. Like she, what? she didn't go crazy. <laughs> she was crazy. <laughs> There's a difference. <laughs> so um, you know, when you see someone who is mad and someone who is acting mad, they are two different things. Mm -hmm. So. We moved on and then we spoke with our family. We had our introduction by December, preparing for a wedding in February. I also have a part of me that does graphics. So my mom was worried around that time that, uh, guy, this is your job. You're not printing wedding IVs and the likes. But for me, I lost that peace at some point. I didn't know what was happening. We kept praying. So around that time, my friend who was supposed to be the best man had to leave the country. We made plans, get my suit, buy us a wedding ring, this and that when you are coming back. And um, he, he eventually came back after the election. I think the wedding was slated for February 10th, they are about. He came on the 4th, but it was moved because the election was around that same time. You know, I know what the election can be in Nigeria. I think that was very second term in office. Mm -hmm. So we didn't know what could happen and decided to move the wedding to April. If not, I would have been married to that same person. It was now five weeks there about to the April wedding. That was later in February when my friend came back that I visited another friend of ours who now told me that uh, your supposed uh, bridal is having an affair with your best friend who's supposed ah, to be my your best man. Oh, who's supposed to be your best man. Oh, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't oh. <laughs> <laughs> Bring our 
Ok. I feel the pain. We bought literally everything. What has not been bought are the perishables. You know, when preparing for an event, for an event five, six weeks from that time. Only the perishables have not been bought, like goats, cacao, pepper, pepper but we had rice, four bags, palm oil, granite oil, and the long list. It happened anyway. <laughs> I've been there and um oh, okay, so um it was a terrible encounter. Many, <laughs> no, she didn't just she didn't break up with you. She and that's the painful part. <laughs> okay. In the whole of the whole scenario, I just got a message one night. I, because the challenge for me was I was mute. In all this, I didn't know what to say. I didn't want to say anything that would cause right. any problem. So I think that gave her the fear that this guy is not saying anything. So I'm neither here nor there. I'm not fighting. Did she anybody. know that you were talking? Did she know you knew? Ah, yeah, we went to one of our counseling sections. I spoke with her and she said she has not seen this guy this year, that she's not even happy with the guy, that huh. they are not on good terms. But there are news that they've been seeing them together around town. So I didn't say anything and you know, um, with a psychological background, I cleared that longer and then, you know, I asked the same question another way in the course of our conversation. And how did I bring it out? Like, in fact, the gift my friend bought for me when he came, I loved them so much and I didn't know it would have bought some. Yeah, so if you see what he bought for me too. Uh, oh. <laughs> and I allowed that finish and I was like, oh, my but you guys have not seen this yet. Um, you know, he sent it to me and said, <laughs> stop all this. These are what they've been saying and she kept on denying, but after months of silence, we spoke with her parents. My parents said I could not continue the relationship. That's my mom and my uncle. And um, it went on that way. And a night, I just got a text from her, a long WhatsApp chat. I kept it in my email till date. Okay. Uh, I'm saying, uh, I'm, I'm not the kind of guy that can support my woman. I believe my friend over her, this, that, and that, and that. And because of that, the relationship is coming to an end. I said I will respond tomorrow. I still didn't say anything because I didn't know what to say. And that was the end of it. And I had to wait another two years before, <laughs> before, I, before I got that package. You got the package. So that's like it. Our best man. <laughs> but now back to our question. You know what really helped me because was that I, I, I was a trained psychologist. I, I can't make suicide an option. And I knew so much that my mental health was important to me. Did you consider it? Consider what? Did it flash through your mind? Did it suicide? <laughs> yeah. Not flash through. It called me. Oh, Not flash through. It called me. Because Did I had make? to stay alone. I, in fact, that was what led to me getting my first car. Because the money I was saving for a wedding, I even kept some aside for her to start business. Um, what am I waiting for? I had to do that to console myself. And I had an understanding of work-life balance. I was a project manager at the international NGO then that covers Africa and a project around Africa. So I knew that a lot lies on my table and I needed to help myself. The church was not helpful at all in any way. My family had to stand in for me. You know, as a guy, you know, the, the, the challenge with break up with guys is that we... We tend to form the strong guy. Honestly. We won't cry. We won't say anything. Honestly. But the truth is, for a guy, it's okay to cry. I get <laughs> yeah, it is okay to cry because it relieves it relieves you of a lot of tension and mm -hmm. pressure. So I was keeping this bottling it over. I was going around town doing my business as regular. But there was a night I could not take it any longer. I had a, 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 a clash with my boss at the office. I was on my way home. I had an accident. That night, I cried. Tenants came out from their room to say, <laughs> Landlord, kilo shele. I get getting now. Wow. So, but that was my healing point. That was when I started to heal up because I, could able, I, I was able to cry, let it out, and I began to do things I enjoy. Mm -hmm. I play games. Mm -hmm. I go out. Mm -hmm. I started drinking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's Don't go there. That's <laughs> no, evidence day. <laughs> you know, thank, thank you for being very practical. Actually. Yes, no, I'm being honest. I'm not always afraid of sharing past experiences because Paul said I was, not I am. Exactly. So I'm talking about what exactly. I went through. I get now. So I, I, I knew I drank. I started mixing out with friends from the past, which I shouldn't have done. But the truth or the major point was that I was finding healing exactly. soccer for my soul and I got it. Okay, so we'll come back to that story yes. because I have a feeling that if you continue down this your narration, eh, we probably will not be able to do this show. Mm -hmm. Honestly. Mm -hmm. 
But you pay me. So <laughs> you pay me. Oh, you pay me. You will take, your question. You will take your question so that we can make it to the end of the show. Okay. okay. And the rest of you guys that are forming strongman, please just try to man up. Speak up. So that you don't cra- you don't so that you don't break down in tears before the end of the show. Okay. All right. So can we get back to the article we're reviewing? The reality is that going through a breakup can feel just as psychologically painful as processing the death of a loved one. Our brains can't distinguish the difference between the two types of loss. Still, still, discussing heartbreak in the workplace is a taboo. Aside from taking one or two mental health days, most organizations expect you to show up and do your job, whether or not you just went through the traumatic experience of ending a relationship. And despite the impact it may be having on your productivity and well-being. Okay, so... The author of this article is saying that when people when people experience breakups, it's as painful as if they experienced the loss. death of a loved one. Usually, we don't see it that way. Mm-hmm. Okay, when people break up with you, so most guys guys will make fun of you. You love most men. I think women tend to have women tend to have support systems. So I'm asking a question generally. All right. So how many people feel that men have support systems when they experience breakups? By show of hands, how many people feel men have support systems when when they break up with them? I have, I have no. no. Okay. How many people feel that women have support systems when they experience breakups? Even the men themselves Okay, so I'm just I didn't want to make it a gender thing, but just so that we understand how painful it is. Um how many of us feel that of the same opinion that when you break up with people the hole you have is almost is as painful as when a member of your family dies. Yeah, I it's agree to that. Painful. I agree to that. Will you just use the word like or love? No, no, no. Like love. They are very different. Okay, mm-hmm. so because of that, I'll ask you, so how do you cope? Because in, in for example, before we had this show, you mentioned that or rather, it was mentioned that you were in a relationship with someone. Yes. <clears throat> and then you broke up with the person. You were the one that broke Look, up I with I clarified that it wasn't a relationship. <laughs> it, was a, it is. It was a situation. Wait. I just got out of a previous relationship. And I really, really loved that girl. Mm. So, knowing fully well that the person that is coming in won't get 100% of me. I'm not that heartless to tell her to stay. So I told her from the very, my um, statement to anybody that is going into anything is define that relationship. If it's friendship you are going for, tell that person it's friendship. So if the person starts building love, you know, ah, either you kill it. Okay, so we've, we've read your theory, all right? And we respect that. But at the end of the day, <laughs> you, you had a breakup with her. Yes. You broke up your situation or yes. whatever it is. Yes, exactly. Okay. And the girl almost committed suicide. Yes, she, she almost did. Are you okay. to say yes? <laughs> I don't know. Wait. 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 Why will you lead the girl on? Yes, yes. Very well. What is it? Why is saying it? So, wait, wait, wait. Let me talk. She said I led her on, which from the very beginning, I mentioned it to her that I cannot be in a relationship with you when the previous one I was with, I still have feelings for her. You can't get my hundred percent. Okay, so I would listen. Just to clarify, so this particular girl you were dating, you went on dates with her. No. Did no, she no, did no. she come to your house? Yes. yes. She slept in your house. Okay. Did she come to your house and collect? Uh, collect. No. no, she didn't. Ah. She never collected. She didn't. Okay. So we should have this to answer. Was defined now. Do you know what collecting means? I don't know what in the context of what you were collect money. If we have collected both finances and the other. Hey. Thank you. It was defined. He told her that what that there's nothing happening between us. No, no, this is just a fling. What he was saying directly was this is this is just a fling and in flings. Things happen. Things happen yeah. So the girl building emotions, I think she no, was on the I, wrong. I, I, I Thank you. I, 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 on the wrong. Okay. So what I say so is because um, you don't want to, from what you just said, either he was giving out or not financial or that. If you actually don't want to be with someone and this person is trying to come closer to you, you understand that you are giving yourself to the person to like time and all of that. Oh, so it's always normal for emotions to build. To build, yes. So it's always normal. So. Either you know it or not. One way okay, or should I explain how it, how okay, it works? Okay, so ex- can you explain in 30 minutes? In 30, 30 seconds. Okay. 30 seconds, yeah. 
when I, I, I knew, you will know that she has feelings. So I called her and told her, see, I can't be in a relationship with you. You won't get my 100%. So for now, just let, let it be platonic. Then people outside, they are saying, ah, Phoenix have gotten somebody else. Or Phoenix is now in an entanglement. So I told her, for now, just stay on your own and I stay on my own. Okay, nice. There was something that made yeah, the situation spiral out of control. It was my pullover, just as Grace has said. Hey. That pullover, I never give it. I have, I never give anybody that pullover. I bought it for me and I loved it. So she asked me for, my ex-girlfriend asked me for one and I got her another one because I really loved that one. And anybody in my school knows that I really love that pullover. So she came to my house uh, on a, one day and I was having my bath. So she asked where I was at the house and bathing. So she went to my room, took that same pullover and she went out to the school. Please, what message will it pass to everybody that knows that I just came out of a relationship? Uh-huh. Exactly. So when I went out after I, I had my bath, I started hearing people say, ah, Phoenix, oh, you've gotten this girl. Ah, I'm like, how? They now showed me a picture. Some of them showed me a picture of her wearing my pullover. Like, ah, no. <laughs> so the night that she wanted to commit that thing, I called her and I said, see, for now, just stay on your own and I'll stay on my own. Let ah, this see. die down first. Yeah, let, us, right. let us just, we can greet outside, but coming to my house, we'll have to stop. Right. So let us just maintain that That's long arm relationship. What, what guy? Then... After the, she now proposed something that she should come to my house and let us talk, like quote unquote talk. Okay. I said, no, 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 no. Because people know if they see you entering my house, it's another fuel to the fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was before. That was before. Okay. Bro. Now I, I said, let me stop it so that it's not fuel to the fire. <laughs> then she said, no, she, that she doesn't want that. She wants us to still be in that relationship. I said, no, that's all. Then she went upstairs and all of a sudden the old school had a screen. I like, what happened? I turned. I saw her almost jumping off. It was our friends <laughs> that now stopped her. Jumping off the roof of the house. <laughs> the balcony. So of the story story, the story the house. House. No, no, my house. Just house. Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, that is the uh, the pullover now. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's my concern <laughs> about this story. <laughs> where, I, I need to know where that pullover is. I don't know where the pullover is. I don't even know. It's very important. But to be sincere, guy, to be a guy, we know it's in the soap. Why will a girl be coming over to your place? Like, I'm very sure this is not the first, second, third time she will be to your place to the extent that she can go into your cupboard and your wardrobe to just carry your pullover or stuff like that. There will be a gl- that you are even. Ba- Do you know it's that? I get yes. <laughs> I know what you're saying. Wait, wait, I'm coming. See, no, I was let's very listen, listen, Like, okay, let's just be practical here. Okay, a girl will be in my room. I'm very sure you are not staying in your home. Apollo self contained in school. No, two bedroom. Okay. Two bedroom, two bedroom right? yeah. And you have your room, yes, which yeah, is, she was inside there. So you have to change it at present. No, to go to the <laughs> she was. It was not aware. She was not yeah. around. I was, okay, she, she was, was not, not around, around when I changed. I went to the bar. She, she, she was came around, in. But if she was around, you would have done the same thing. No. Nah. Alright, oh, so we'll take his story. I allow the story to go so long. Whether I like it or not, whether you are in a relationship or not, what what we have from your story is that expectations were created, and at the end of the expectation, somebody could not bear the weight of over to the abs- your absence. Both of you, you served breakfast. You received breakfast. Okay, so that's that has balance. Equation balance. Okay, so how do you cope? I don't want you to because we've told us how exactly do you cope. When someone breaks up with you and you still have to go to work in the middle of a breakup, how do you cope? Yeah, you can cry. There, especially if you're a girl, you do a lot of crying. You can cry very well. The way I don't cry, you move. Well, no matter, no, no, no. The, the point, the psychological effect of crying is that it helps your brain. No matter the gender, if you need to cry, please cry. It's culture that have told us that men don't cry. Even so it was not. Uh, wait, that's, that's not the kind of relationship we are talking about. Relationship is too normal, mature to that. Yeah. That's a relationship <laughs> that doesn't have. <laughs> Can we? That doesn't have a purpose. Frank, <laughs> Frank, you are doing. You just said right now that you should not cry. Okay. <laughs> now he is telling you that his relationship is serious. You are telling me it's not serious. <laughs> <laughs> you are both negating each other's experience. You have just told them that men should not cry. Be but I will tell you this. I will tell you this, Rashid, so that we can move on. I'll just tell you this. At the point in which um, you had a breakup, okay, 
at that particular point, most people will tell you that because you probably were not yet 20 or you were just in your yeah, early 20s, you. you still had time. You are not ready to start a marriage. Yeah. It's a completely different thing if it's a completely different thing if you are dating someone and you wanted to marry the person. You had printed out wedding IVs. Yeah. Everybody yeah. had known. Sure. Are you members dating? of your members of your are you a Muslim or Christian? Christian? Okay, members of your church had known. People in your place of work had known. Mm. You had given them wedding IV and then. Five weeks to the wedding, you have to tell them that the wedding is no longer holding. I understand you want to hear your views, but listen, by the time this video goes up, somebody's going to Google a video and this video will pop up. And what they will say is this, how to cope, all right, with a breakup, how to continue, how to, continue to go to work while you're experiencing a breakup. So that you don't get, you don't have a breakup and then get fired. Mm. You understand? So how do you cope? Is there anybody who has been in this situation in which you've had to cope? Yes, um, Frank, yeah, okay, we'll I'll, take your story. Let's take that too. I want to hear their thoughts, then we'll continue with the article. Okay. Um, so, Bright, yeah, Bright, how did you cope? Tell us the story. Okay, in, in, this, in this case now, I was the person who, I would say, sad. So, like, you're the one who broke up with the person. Yes, I broke up with the person. Yeah, but you can't tell us you how you. Now, why I'll, I'll be able, I want to just say something about this because it really hurts me because um, um, this was a relationship that was supposed to lead to marriage. So, why I had to break, I had to break up. With the okay. person now, breakup is not only just the person receiving end. The person also who who Same. also served it too is not always easy at times to make these decisions. But sometimes some decisions have to be made. A lot of times, when people break up with you, a lot of times you do not see it coming. Mm. You know, people for counsel. You have spoken to doctors. You would have read up about it and would have struggled with it. You probably would have asked people for counsel. You have spoken to doctors. You would have read up about it. You probably would have met somebody who got married. They had sickle cell children. True. That's a completely your mind was prepared. You are kind of like, you know, it's coming. Mm -hmm. All right. That's completely different from you just wake up one day and they tell you that we're downsizing the organization. Everybody, you are crying to your MD. The MD tells you he also has been fired. <laughs> you understand? So we are talking about how do you cope when someone breaks up with you and you didn't see it coming? Mm -hmm. Because if you saw, if you see, if you see it coming, you probably can prepare yourself anyway. <laughs> you get true. Has that been your situation? Yeah, okay, I, so let's see. I picked okay. the lesson. That was what I first did because I looked at the old thing like, what did I do wrong? Okay. How would I move from this phase? And immediately I was able to summarize and move myself off that scenario. The next thing is I decided to heal myself. Like, number one is pick a lesson because if you don't pick a lesson, you, still go, you, are, you will still repeat the same thing in the next relationship or next friendship or next marriage you are going to enter or anything. So you must first pick a lesson. Then the next thing after picking that lesson is you, you heal yourself because your organization does not want to care that uh, because you, somebody broke your heart, it's going to perform or be productive. Nobody cares about that. It's your mental health. Okay, so I have a couple of questions in your situation. Just, I have a follow -up, couple of questions. Did you, after the person broke up, did you call the person? Okay, fine. The, I was unable to talk to the person. I still told somebody this story yesterday because somebody told me like there was, there's going to be a fight. I never saw the fight as my relationship. I just feel, okay, you saw me today and you're telling me there's going to be, you are going to face a fight. Don't talk. And I was like, what? So when it didn't happen, like two, three weeks after that, um, that discussion with that man that I just saw on the road and it's at the point I was just trying to wrap my head around the whole thing. You are, you are speaking no critically. It's confusing. I can't follow you. Kind of okay, so tell us this. Did the person call you on the phone and break up with you? It was a text. Okay. The person just sent you a text message. I was in the text message. Okay. Please don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> Although we've been having back and forth. Was but, that on the text message? No, normal before that period, and we've resolved. And in my mind, I was ready to even move on with her, like, no matter what. Then that very day, she just sent me a text message, like, it's over. And in my head, I was just trying to wrap my head around just the whole over. thing, like, it's over, it's over. But the, she was trying to call, because when I was, I was just trying to hold myself. I don't want to, this mindset of crying, I don't want to cry. I Please. don't want to... I'm sorry, you are trying to qualify. So she sent you a text message. Yes. She said it's over. Did you call her back? I did not. Immediately. Have you called her back since that day? 
Yes, we've moved on. We've been talking. Did you call her frequently after? Like, why is he over? Why did you break up with me? Did you? I did not because I already know what happened. Knew, knew what happened. Did you change? Did you change your be, your dressing? Did you lose interest in the way you dressed? No. Showed up to work. You didn't cut your hair. It did not because I can't. You didn't go drinking with bodies. Uh, I did it, not it immediately because it's, it's really the only thing it did was after the moment I had to sit down because those period the reason I I did not I did not call at that moment was because. I don't want to feel you to play the weak person. Mm -hmm. So to, after that you, moment, sir, you are BS. You are, you, are, you, are, you are bullshitting us. BS. No, that very moment, okay. that very, I mean that very day, mm. I did not call back. Okay. Because I don't want to feel weak. Now, um, few days after, in my own, my my eating got affected. Okay. I was not eating well. And you know, when you are eating, when you're not eating, what people will tell you, they all thought I was sick. You lost weight. I, I lost, I, no, I lost, I, yes, I, yeah. definitely. When you're not eating, definitely you lost weight. Okay. So then I think a few days after, I had to sit down and cried. The only reason I called her back was she sent me another text after not, because she so was trying to reach the thing. I already knew what, was, what, 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 what happened because somebody told me. And that was the, the issue for the back and forth. So the moment she realized that this person is not reaching back, it's because she's trying to play the victim. So she sent me a text and said, you took advantage of me. That was the only time I had to call her. Like, okay, fine, explain where and how. Then along the line, I just felt like I had to go my status, okay, post some things to cheer, to cheer myself. And in the line of posting some things to just cheer myself, uh, somebody, a friend reached out to me and uh, how far you moved on like that? Uh, because what I posted was about year. I posted I was moving from this year to this year. So she thought she thought I was moving from ah uh, to another person. So she was, and that was one of the major uh, people who propagated the old or who, who expanded the old story, the old breakup. You're not. I'm you telling you, not, you not, I don't want to go. You're not aligned. You're, you're not. You're not giving us uh, details. And so, story, no, and mind, you are like wanting that there's something in this story that is not. Yeah, it's not. It's it's not, not, not can I? Yes, I, I, can I, can I, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I don't want to sort of because obviously you have your reasons. Probably the person is going to see this, and you don't, want, don't want to. to open up. Uh, you don't want to open up a can of worms and the rest. I get that, but coping. You moved on. You you encourage yourself and you moved on. Sure. Okay. So. We'll go. I, I asked that question, how do you cope? Because the author of this article has a couple of um, suggestions. And I want us to judge the suggestions on the basis of what you have said. Yes, so I want you to judge this suggestion on the basis of what you have said, how you moved on. So let's, let's move on to, so how do you cope? Okay, so what exactly does a breakup do to our hearts, to our brains? To start, it's useful to understand what's happening in your mind and body during a breakup. Winch explained that after ending a relationship, the chemical reaction in our brains often evokes difficult emotions that disrupt our everyday lives. Winch likened these feelings to desperation, which he said is unique to romantic heartbreaks and is driven by deeper feelings of hope. That means that you have the wish that you can rekindle a connection with the other person because they are still theoretically available and physically alive. That was what he was saying. That the difference between the breakup and the fact that you are, and the fact that you are losing a loved one is that the loved person is dead. But in a breakup, there's a part of you that in your mind you're like, "Wishin, can we move past this?" There's another part of you that is also you are weighing the cost of the breakup, and you are weighing the odd. Okay, and then he goes on to say that people are surprised by how they act in this situation. He said, "Many of us do things that would normally be out of character. For example, calling our exes multiple times." leaving voice messages, showing up to work frazzled, and talking about them endlessly. You are complaining, you are telling everybody, why would this person do this to me? And all of this, of course, makes it harder to be productive or to begin new tasks. So he's saying that if you find this familiar, don't be hard on yourself. He emphasized that erratic behavior is normal. Indeed. Except you've been hot, regardless of whether you're the one who served breakfast or not. Okay, so there are a couple of steps this, a lot of this article is suggesting. And you mentioned that, Bright, you mentioned the issue of closure. The author is saying that you should find closure. That breakups are personal. Accept that what? It has happened. It has happened. 
happen. Sometimes people experience breakups at difficult moments. Like I know of someone who they broke up with the person around the time his father died. So his father died, and a few days after that, the girlfriend called and said, We're not doing it again. My girlfriend is okay. You get so. So the girlfriend probably, you know what, the father is already dead, so I'm as well just. He's already in a bad situation. Let me just give him this. Crying already. Let me use this to exit. Okay, so people are like that. So if you have all that around, and that's why he was saying, if you notice in his story, he mentioned that in the middle of the outbreak, he was driving, and then you had you had the had accident. You had the idea of you had an accident, and yes. then he broke down and started crying. If that was a movie, the rain would probably fall in that day. <laughs> was the rain falling that day? No, no, no. No, no, no. Okay, so. I was even broke that night. You were broke. Mm-hmm. So, so okay. <laughs> so, since so, so, a couple of so let's assume someone has broken up with you. I want to ask a quick question. Do you contact them? Do you not? Yes. You call them. Don't you, don't you, you will call them. Yes, I think that things will get better. Now, I'm asking that if you want to move on, should you contact don't. them? If you want to move on, no. But you have to you have to heal and have that your distance because still contacting your past or let me use the word past will still cloud your judgment of the present. Okay, so let me Frank, sorry, I want to ask Esther. Have they broken up with you before? Yeah. Mm. Recently? Yes, February. February. Oh, yeah. was, it, was it before Valentine's Day or after? Ah, uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, just. <laughs> nice guy. Okay, so you got the Valentine's Day gift. Exactly. Okay, so did you contact the person? Yes, contact. You see, you kept trying to reach out to the person. Why? He ghosted. I don't know. It felt like um, we could rekindle everything, like start afresh again. Let's go back to the article. There's a reason why I asked that. Please read the paragraph, the key to recovering. The key to recovering. That's under find closure on your own. In the second paragraph, under find closure on your own. The key to recovering. Stop depending on your ex. The only person you can the only person who can give you the closure you need is yourself, according to Winch. Stick to no contact rule, Winch said. You need to firmly re-establish yourself as an individual independent of them. Your goal should be to minimize the space that that person is currently occupying in your mind. No contact means no talking to them as well as about them. He goes on to say that. So don't call them, like you said. Just stay out of their space so that you can go. And he says that you should list a couple of things. List the couple of reasons why the relationship was not working. Okay? If you make a list... Listen that, and so that you can assess the situation. This is easier for men to do. It's harder for women to do, particularly if you are dependent on the guy. Now, most people will not like to ask, so I'm going to ask this question. Is there any woman here who has dated the guy that you've been dependent on to come through? Hmm? What are you saying? <laughs> I want the pay of school fees. Us. Uh, me. Like I should. That's how I am. But I'm going to give it to you. Monthly stipends. Or monthly stipends. Okay. Has anybody been in a situation in which you have this? This is a place for honesty. Okay. We're not saying that the person is sponsoring your education, but has there been a particular place in which you've been dependent? And I, I think it goes both ways. If it's rendering assistance, can't, is the mic, mic? Hmm. If it's rendering assistance, does that count? Yeah. What kind of assistance? Assistant. Please, Assistant. Assistant. Which type of assistance? Not school fees. Financial. Financial. Financial, yeah, financial assistance. Like for example, I mean, there was this time I I was into mini importation, so. My goods landed, and I used to collect half payment, but I needed to like clear the goods. But when it came, that was when custom people wanted to like hike the price, and though, and I was, I was, I needed like extra thirty thousand, and I was dating my ex. Then I reached out to him, see what I have. Can you support, please? And he helped out. That's a difference. Well, now hey, hey. We are talking about. A, in, um, no, I don't know. I'll sit down and count. We're talking I'm about. Not, I know. Why? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what I'm talking about. We're talking about a situation in which probably on the financial, the person actually has a, an investor stake in your life. Right. Probably the person is paying your bills, exactly. paying your house rent, or supporting your family. Supporting your family. Ladies that will like. I think it's ladies that will talk. Yes. No, no. No, allow please. Just do the ladies. Have all honestly now, right now, there are ladies because it's usually harder to break up with people if you are financially dependent upon yes. them, and it's usually more painful if somebody you are financially dependent upon 
breaks up. Breaks, breaks up, up with you. All right. Yeah, it's true. It's true. You understand? Because now, not now, not just not only has the person just lost the love of his or her life. <laughs> The person has also lost life. No, sorry, if I may buttress your question, this is one of the reasons why we have many young ladies in abusive relationships. Yeah, I am right. Mm-hmm. They can't leave. Mm-hmm. And they yeah, won't leave. what they're getting. Mm-hmm. All right. And but it's mm-hmm. the reason this con- I don't so don't lose sight of this conversation. As we crack jokes and all that, this conversation is how to how to cope, how to get focus at work after the ad- the emphasis is how to focus at work. Mm-hmm. Okay? And so, and that's why I asked the question that, how do you, I was asking the question that, how do you handle if you are financially dependent upon somebody mm-hmm. and then the person breaks up with you? How do you handle that situation? I think, Party. sorry, I think to handle that situation, you have to start before you even Is go into, like, you have to start, with, you have to handle, you have to learn how to handle it ahead. So, for a lady, and this is because once it happens, there is no level of coping mechanism you are going to do. The void is there. Financial void is automatically there. And somebody, you would need another person to fill it in. That means you stand the chance of falling into a terrible relationship next because of the need to fill that void. So I think generally, for, for people in that situation, knowing that this is not a good, a very okay situation and addressing it so that you start like earning so that should in case something like that happens, you are still okay. So the solution for somebody who is dating somebody who is like a benefactor or who helps is, is not to just stay there and be like, ah, I'll be entitled because man, that source is not good. The person can die. Uh, I think you disagree with her. Yes. Okay. Okay, so you should just put a situation that the person is still there and they are out there depending on someone. It happens to you. Go with, I was the, um, is it beneficiary? I mean, benefactor, and the person was my beneficiary, and she was all dependent on me, and I had to call the relationship out. She continued, then I think she was in her um, year four, going to her final year. She continued to actually beg and beg and beg until she entered year five, because she knew that during those period, Father has actually withdrawn himself from saying, I'm not going to foot your bills again. So it was just me and God. Let me just put it at start. And I could actually understand that because of the little I was doing, it was going in a lot. And I had to now sit back and tell her, okay, fine, we're not in a relationship again, but I won't stop this aspect of me trying to mm, put you through. The NGO. And after she was done, I told her once she's done, that is the end of it. Mm-hmm. Even when she when she was done with school, she still tried to say, I know you said that is where you're going to stop, but please, it's still very difficult. So we found out in business, and after then, that was just it. Okay, can yeah. I, if I can say question. something, sorry, if I can say something, uh, we need to do um, a root cause analysis okay. of this thing. Let's let's go back. Let's let's go back a little bit. Um, because when as we're talking about breakups and and I keep I kept asking myself, have I ever cried? <laughs> have I ever felt bad? I mean, to me, I had a breakup and we prayed together afterward, and we left. And in fact, after that, I went to probably drink or something. Not because I'm a terrible person or that I don't cry. Just like if someone dies, some children will cry, some will not. Mm-hmm. Not because those ones that didn't cry probably loved the parents even more than the ones that yeah. cried. Right. So I think the the root cause problem is we when whenever we like one of my bosses used to say, is there actually love? It's 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 commitment. Even in marriage, okay. it's commitment. Love is a con- I'm sorry to say, love is a concept. It's it comes with is an actual word. <laughs> when you say when I say I love you, there's a whole lot of things I'm saying. That's why there's a vow. That's why when I say I love you, I'm putting in a lot of commitment behind it, including my fidelity. I don't know if I'm making any sense. Mm-hmm. So the same thing in relationships. Why are we actually in, in that relationship? Why am I professing love to this partner? Most times when you break up or when you serve breakfast or when you receive breakfast, you are crying because of what you lose, not because of that person. Mm. I'm sorry to say, but that's the truth. 
if you look you at it objectively. So for me, uh, does everybody agree with you that? I, I don't need yeah, to. For those of us who are, are, saying, so are you saying that you are crying because of the benefits that you stop yeah. getting from the? If you look at it, it from, from me, from, if you look at it objectively, mm, critically, you do a critical thinking. Okay, for instance, a woman has been cheating or a guy has been cheating over time, and then finally you are caught, and then you are crying. Ninety percent of the times, that person, the culprit, is actually crying and feeling bad because he or she was caught. Mm. I'm being sincere because he or she was caught, not because of the of the. She was actually enjoying the whole thing now, <laughs> over and over time. Over it was happening. Over. So I think when when we're talking about love, that's why I said let's do a root cause analysis. Why do we really feel bad? Why should a relationship breakup affect work? It's simply because of the amount of emotions you are put into it, which in 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 another sense might not even be called love. Some people are. So some women, let me use women because it, it's common among women, are so emotionally dependent on their partner, even not even finances, to the extent that if they don't talk to you in an hour, if they don't talk to you in a day, it's a problem. Now, when you break up with them, they are not crying, they are not wailing, they are not in serious pain because of... But they are, way, they are, they are in that pain because of the vacuum of someone they can talk to someone that can hear them out i i would I, I, as much as i would want to agree with you that does not answer we, we've, in this article what we said is that um people feel the same pain similar to when they lose a loved one do you say that because do you say that a man who loses his father his father his mother is crying because of yeah, that's, that's the well, benefit I'm, I'm that not, he derives I'm from not going that to totally agree with that's... the fact that i would feel the same pain when i have a breakup with that 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 statement I, is, is I, I a relative word I would say this, and because a lot of our experiences are born out of, a lot of our worldview is really born out of our experiences. Sometimes you can tell people things, like there are things that you can espouse to believe. When you go through it, you will realize why that is different. Okay? The fact that, and, and the article we've read, and the, the emphasis of this is at work. Because most of the people who are going to watch this show, if they are not married, are in that stage in which they are planning to get married and they are working somewhere. And as much as possible, we want to ensure that breakups are inevitable. It's not every single person you date, you end up getting married to. Exactly. And in every single relationship, in some relationships, some people have more at stake than the others. Mm -hmm. Somebody in every relationship wants the relationship to work for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. Okay? Some people, some, sometimes they will tell you that in relationships, something they call them um, relationship memory. That's a lot of times when couples, for example, if couples who've been together for a long time, when they divorce, there's something they call relational memory, meaning that half of the person's life is, is already wired into the other person. For example, the, the wife who does not drive, who hasn't been driving because the husband has been the one always driving, mm -hmm. okay? Or the husband who has not been cooking because yeah. the wife has been yeah. one I'm just as a, I'm not saying that wives should cook and husbands should drive. I'm just saying as an illustration. So when those families split up, you will now find out that they probably might be the same way in which when you lose your phone, sometimes it's not even the loss of the physical phone. It's all the phone numbers and the activities, activities that, that, that is locked yeah, into the it's phone. Most you something, are using it. <laughs> you get? So if you have lost that person, what it means is that, yes, in a sense, you can see the things you access, which I agree with you. But also, your brain has, your brain has been wired there eh, to see this person as a permanent part of your of life. Your life. And then yeah. that person, you are now removing that. So you will feel something is missing. And the default response for a lot of people is desperation. I want to get it back. Right. Anxiety. Not anxiety. anxiety. And, and if you work in a, in a very, very high pressure environment, and this, the reason why this becomes a bit difficult is, for example, if you work in institutions that, that place you under financial targets, that are supposed to meet financial mm -hmm. targets, and you probably, the, because I will tell you this, for lots of people, the work they do does not bring them fulfillment. Sure. A lot of people, they do the work to foot the bills. Exactly. They go back home or they go, they find fulfillment in their relationships with mm -hmm. their family. Mm -hmm. And so if that family relationship is, is broken down for so many people, they feel pressure at work, they come back, there's no place to come back, the person under pressure, mm -hmm. the person feels desperate. Like what she said, you start looking, how do I find somebody who can foot these bills? You understand? So, and we are, this is a how to show. Okay, so the summary of this article, and you can read the rest of the article. The article is on the Harvard Business Review website, hbr.org. It was published on December 19th, 2022. The author is Evelyn Nam. How to stay focused at work after a breakup. So, 
So a couple of points, how do you move on? So this person said you should monitor your progress. So first, create a to-do list. The to-do list should have three goals. The first on it is no calls or messages to your ex. So to-do list, first, no calls or messages to your ex. Second is what? Finish an important task for work. And the third is do something nice for yourself. If you're the type that likes cooking, cook fancy dinner. If you want to go out with friends, go out with friends, watch a movie. Some people say take ice cream and all that. So do that. Okay? As you complete each of these three tasks, you don't pick messages or calls from your ex, you finish an important task for work and you do something nice for yourself, you will feel a sense of fulfillment, you gain a, a, a sense of control and the rest. Another option you have is to write a journal about how you feel. Some people will tell you that all the emotion you feel about the person, pour it out on the pages of paper. Okay? If you do that, it helps you feel better. Second, use this time to learn more about yourself. Okay? Um... The author of this article believes that uh, breakups uh, are a good opportunity to start building better relationships. Like as we had somebody mention on our panel. Okay, so the third is identify the things you need to do to get your life back on track. For example, sometimes we start to change a part of ourselves because we're dating a particular person. For example, if you're dating a footballer and the footballer says that he's, he plans to travel around the world to play for Man U and the rest, there's a natural tendency that you also may start planning your life uh, around to it. around that. And once that breakup, you realize that that feature does not exist, you have to start um, rerouting. rerouting yourself. I know of people, for example, um, there was, when I was in med school, I had one of my seniors who dated a girl for probably like two, three years or so. The guy had a car. His father was well, very well to do. And the girl was always, she came around. I mean, this, this, this guy had, um, he had air conditioning as a student. And it generated around 24 hours. So in a town that did not have electricity, you understand? So, and the girl will come around. Sometimes you see her snuggle under the duvet and the rest. A few times I check the guy out. But like, this guy is really having a nice time. He drove like brand new cars. Only for the guy to graduate and then broke up. And in my mind, I was like, I cannot imagine what that girl will go through because to find somebody else to date that probably will have that, that kind lifestyle. of lifestyle it will be extremely difficult. Nice. Okay, so again, this and this applies both ways, whether for ladies or for guys. Some guys are dating ladies because maybe their fathers are extremely wealthy. And they've planned a life, a line of succession in the organization. You may have to find a way to reroute your life. And we're saying this. Um, okay. So you also may have to intentionally try to form habits that will help you meet your goals. Okay. Some people will tell you attend a networking event once a week. If you have time, come on the dark post show. Meet new people. Okay, get over your get over your ex. Okay. Um, you might want to meet regularly with people that can give you financial advice. Just something to get your mind out of that frame of mind. If you are a religious person, if you're a Christian, if you're a Muslim, you may find succor in the pages of scripture. <laughs> I know of, again, I know of somebody who, when they broke up with him, he spent two weeks, he read the entire book of Isaiah <laughs> <laughs> to find a life purpose. <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> okay, and it, it may mean that you may have to abandon things that might remind you of that <laughs> person. Exactly. If you used to play tennis together, you may want to. Stop, because each time you play, pick up a tennis racket, you may remember what used to be, okay? Mm -hmm. So use work as a meaningful distraction. All right, that's a third tip. Especially the outbreak, they take all their energy, they pour it into creating an album, and the stuff um, blows up. Creating an album, and the stuff um, blows up. Okay, so... So the goal is not just to get to the office, but pour yourself into the work so that at least the emotions have... An outlet. If you and your partner work together in the same office, it's going to be hard yeah. and it requires a lot of maturity. Yes. The kind of maturity that Mario has demonstrated on this show. Trying to stay level headed while you date, the, while, while you yeah, are working in the same space with the person you used to date. It's going to require, and I, I, do, I wish you well. And that's the reason why on the show we try to advocate that don't date people. It's not a good idea to date people you work, work with. Okay. Mm -hmm. But if you do, if you have to do that, um, well, if you wish you the best. Yeah. And then the fourth tip is this. Remember you're going to be okay. All right. There's, there's one thing with this show, which we've learned from hosting this show for a while, and it's this, is that almost every single person has experienced some form of outbreak or the other. As much as you may feel, if you're watching this and you're going through this presently, as much as you feel that your life has come to an end, just realize that it's just another Saturday evening for some other person. Okay. So you will get over this. You'll get better. Your life will improve. So those are the four tips from this article. If you are going through, I strongly suggest you go, you read up on your own. So in addition to the tips we have from this article, now we've, some issues came up back and forth. You came up with a couple of stories. Perhaps there are, there are things that 
in our personal lives that we do not cover. Or perhaps there's, there's a particular level of difficulty. Or perhaps you are the one who you are going to break up with someone today after you leave this show. And you are wondering how do I ensure that they can cope with the breakup. So if you have those, let's do back and forth question and answers and then before we wrap up the show. Okay, I think I have a question. Okay. From my own experience. In a situation like this, I'm going to first of all share my experience. So my ex-boyfriend was my math tutor. He used to teach me mathematics in school. Okay, let's say my statistics exam first semester, I passed because with his help, I was able to pass. So, second semester, <laughs> failed the course. <laughs> no more to do that. Yeah. <laughs> this guy is very excited. That was exactly what I was saying, that dependence. <laughs> yeah. 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 I failed the course. I got yeah. F. Now I have to carry over that course again. Mm. Statistics. Oh. Ah. So, in such situations, what do you do? <laughs> Because I don't know. Watching <laughs> YouTube videos or something else. Because he was a very good help to me. She's asking. She's asking. She's asking for. I know she's laughing about this. Okay, but you guys. I mean, you remember. You know what it's like. Let's be honest. If you have a carryover in university, it doesn't matter how much you laugh about it. The pain of that carryover. Oh, it's a lot. It's a lot. So, so she's asking for help. So let's. Okay. As much as we laugh, she needs practical advice. So is there right. anybody here who can give her practical advice? Sam. Okay. Yeah. Sam. Yeah. I'm Sam. So. So what I can say is this: You are dating a guy, and the guy is good in math, and he helps you to pass your course, maybe first semester. And you guys broke up. I believe that he's not the only good guy in maths. There so are other good guys. Hand, please, okay, me. there are other good guys in maths. Girls too. Uh, girls too, yes. And you could always find them around, or you could meet your friends. They will find you other good guys that will help you pass your course. But that's the yes, even no. copy. Copies will pass. Like there are so many things. There are so many options. So what you, do you mean copies will pass? He cheats in the exam. No copy. No, no, no. Ah, cheating. I, okay, okay. I, no, cheating. I mean, Wait. like, form of help, you understand? You could always get help from your friends. Information. During the exam. During the exam. Really. Before the exams. Yeah. And even yeah. during the exam or tutorials, like, mm. could, exactly. they're always there to help you. For the fact that they knew that you had a breakup, you understand? They're just there for you. Mm. And to mm. give you that support, that full support. Nice. Yeah. So stop. You thinking about your age that knows math because you will always find better math teachers there are there. And in you, have you, you have you too that also teach you like there are so many sources you there. I think the question you should ask is um, is, oh. the, is the is that the unique guy or is that I, I, the I want to say that is I, 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 for you? I want to ask you something. Let's say for example your ex happens to be a medical doctor and he's the only one who can actually treat you at some point. Just die. Will you go <laughs> die or go to him? Or will you choose just to stay and not go because you feel like he's your ex? Okay. Definitely you go, you go to him, bruh. For him to I treat you. No, but you know, I think no, no, no. I, I, I want to explain something. People fail to understand that love is love. Business is business. business. Life is life. life. Huh. So okay. you get you can always go and meet him and tell him, okay, help me with this particular topic. Without any emotion, and nothing will happen. I, I still meet people I don't talk to. Like if it's business and I know this will have the business yeah. idea, I'll meet you and discuss business, business, business with you. Yeah. No, After no, business, yeah. I'll walk away. <laughs> business was, is that was that was I, I want to clarify. Clarify. Are you the one that broke up with him? Uh-huh. That's, why it's hard. Hey, that's why it's hard to go back. You broke up with him. Yes, I did. Okay, so you broke up with him, but you did you were going to have a second semester. Are you going to It's depending. I think they believe it. She believed, she believed nobody else can take her that course. I was, I was okay. That's just the thing. I think she was that, blocked. Like, she decided not to see the good of all other persons around her. Ah, actually, no. Wow. I mean, I mean the good in what sense? Like, maybe psychologically, like, oh, how did this guy fit teach me? That's the beyond point. That. You cannot read and So there are some that. girls, and like, sweet man. girls around her. Ah, babe, I'm fine. I fit teach you now. No, you no, don't no, know. No, 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 you decide, no, like, you've she, configured she, yourself she, to believe that it's the only one that can actually teach you. No, she's saying, what can she do? She's not saying that he's the only you are, you are I'm, I'm saying, I'm that just that trying to... But you still have not given her a part Yes. Part. Okay. So it starts with you now reconfiguring that same mind that nobody this guy is dinner. No. You know, get cosmetics. 
I'm not a tutorial. You don't yes, know. No, the you question. Know, I'm not. I'm not, it's, it's I'm very not hard. trying. The question one. she's asking goes beyond a relationship <laughs> Thank now. Thank you. Just it's, like the one you said. It's about our success in our examination. That's and I think that's what we need to address. Thing I'm saying. We are going back I to our fourth in relationship. Like she is not the only um, one. I have madam, to move on. If I would say one thing is, um, you can do it. Yes. First, believe in yourself. However, he might have conditioned you to think um, without him, you can't pass. Mm -hmm. And you're still carrying that I'm mindset. So there's a place of renewing your mind first okay. to understand that you are built to succeed. Yes. So you can pass yes. with or without the help of yes, the guy. Exactly. Listen, every other young lady in your class are making A's and B's and, and C's in their exam yeah. without any guy that's tutoring them. So if what your lecturer has taught you is not enough to fetch you the grade you desire, then you need to actually work on yourself first. Do you understand mm -hmm. that now? So it's not about him because after school, you won't need him to work in a bank. You won't need him to cook food at home. Exactly. So like I tell every young lady I meet, it's not my better half. It's one plus one equals to one. That means you are a complete human being. Mm. You are not somebody's half. So many times young people think that I'm looking for my better half. Me, I'm complete. On my I'm own not looking for half. And I don't want to marry another half so that we become one and a half. One and no. Half. <laughs> it's one we plus one. So in yourself, you are complete as an entity. God made you with brain, everything. So please, start think, seeing yourself in that perception and from now that you don't need another person to become who God wants you to be. You can pass statistics, you can pass mathematics without the help of anybody. If that lecturer has taught everybody in class and they pass, you can pass. Let's just take a response so that okay. we move on. And I think you need to um, ask yourself why you took the course serious in the first place, in the first semester. Because I know that okay. girls, like, right, and, and it has happened to me, when you like someone, you want to do your best you to, to impress the person. So it could be that you, you passed the course because you wanted to prove to the person that all the things you are teaching me, I've learned it, she and now the person off. is there, is no longer there, and you do not have the motivation to do it because, I mean, the person is no longer there. I think at this point, you need to decide that you want to pass this course for yourself to prove that you are available. Your ex-boyfriend was a support system to pass that exam. You need, a, you need other support systems. There are tutorial groups. Find other ladies in your class. Have tutorials together. Treat the courses, pass questions and all that, and write the exam. Okay? But do not go back to your ex, because if you go back to your ex to, to you take, you take the course and break up with him, you're just being, you're just being unfair. Okay? You are, using, you are using him, and you probably will not like if someone did the same to you. So does anybody else have, apart from that, does anybody else have... Um, I want to relate with what he said about crying or no, no, um, no crying. Some of us don't cry immediately. And even most people will not cry immediately. You have this outbreak. Guys. And what um, the, the, um, the article was saying is relating the issue to um, losing somebody. It's not talking about the same um, scenario. We're talking about the vacuum, the vacuum created. So because if your father dies now, the moment the thing happens, you are looking, you're not looking at the old benefit. You're looking at the scenario of, I will come home, this man will, I will not even see anybody to, to shout at me. I will not see this, I will not see that. So those vacuum, those things affect, um, what's it called? Uh, um, um, that's what she's talking about in the old thing. So, and again, the crying might not be immediately, but most of us, one way or the other, will definitely cry. Yeah. And if you, you even, no matter how you hold it, is it that you cry aloud or you cry inside of you, the cry will still come because the, the, the thing is going to happen. The cry will, will happen. So that's mm -hmm. just what I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to talk about. So I think with that, we've, we've run the full course. Um, thank you very much, guys, for showing up. For the show. Thank you very much for having us. It's, it's been a very sober conversation. Most of us are about <laughs> to think about... Um, Breakups are breakups are difficult. They're extremely hard to um, to experience, particularly when it's forced upon you. But at least with a couple of with these couple of tips, we hope um, you would you would have a pathway to navigate um, through your workplace 